in Sarah Schechner's home, and here's Ken Lowney, and we are about to demonstrate E.C. Pickering's rotating desk with a rotating cat. Oh, the cat jumped. Oh, well, got another one? Uh, there are two cats, that's right. This is the desk that each each segment had a a uh, drawer. Twelve drawers. Twelve drawers. Yeah. And was there a significance to the fact that there were twelve? I think just the fact that... I think that was the astronomical, you know, yeah, think, number. And I think people had 30 degree triangles, which made it work when you're a carpenter. Uh, yeah, so... So, so it had nothing to do with the number of bureaus or the number well, of different no, projects. I don't think so. Don't yeah. think so. And then the bookcase rotates independently. Yeah. And some of James Baker's books in here. That's marvel. That yeah, that is marvelous. The stickers on an hour from Alan Shapley that said like Shapley oddments and uh, you know. So where where did you guys find this? It was that? Uh, well, you can describe it. Uh, a warehouse in East Boston. Right. Yeah, but who, by the Harvard College who, who saved it? Who saved? Who was the one who saved it? Well, Dr. Baker at one time back in 1952 rescued it from the dumpster where Menzel had had them put it, right. and they disassembled it. And then, so that was in 52. That was in 52. So Shapley was very much around. Yeah, and uh, and I guess Baker contacted Harlow and uh, arranged to have it sent out to uh, Alan Shapley's place in Colorado where he set it up. The National Bureau of Standards. Yeah. yeah. Worked at the National Bureau of Standards. And then, uh, then it came back east in the 80s or so? Yeah, late, late, late 80s. Very late 80s. So I think Barbara Welfare had something to do with that, tracking it down. And, and it, it came back, back I think, in I don't a know car. That. I know Owen was. was oh, yeah. maybe Owen. Owen. Yeah. yeah, and I think it came yeah. back in a car, uh, wound up in the warehouse in East Boston. Yeah. And then the warehouse, where one floor of which had Harvard and Smithsonian, you know, old workstations and things and boxes for the Harvard collection of plates. There were wooden boxes for yeah. the plates, which um, are still there. And. Uh, they were losing the, the warehouse was going to be converted to condos because it had a million dollar view of the city of Boston. It was out on a point surrounded by ocean on three sides and uh, and had, uh, so yeah, they were daughter. trying to find what to do with things. And so, um, yeah. so uh, it was sitting and uh, in danger of being discarded once. Sure. Amazing. Museums and was it in this condition when you? No, no, it was it. in pieces. Uh, we should show you some pictures of it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. We had to haul it out of the warehouse. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the, then the we were figuring out how it went together was a little tricky, and Ken had to make a, a few parts that were missing. And yeah. Well, this is uh, we clearly it better this than is it was. Well, quite well, seriously yeah. engineered here. But the, the thing the thing about it is it was kinematically designed. It was clearly designed not by a carpenter building it. This was done by somebody who understood mechanical engineering because hmm. there are things about it that are, in terms of how the bearings work, are clearly kinematically designed uh, so they don't bind and that sort of thing. Yeah. Not over constrained. Um, the castings and everything are beautifully designed and made. And so there are metal castings on there the There are metal side. castings yeah, uh, there. And, um, and we can see some of the, some. Of, this is original structure here? Yeah. yeah, it's all original. All original, although the shaft itself, the tube in the center is one we had to get. Yeah. Uh, but it was more or less standard sized stuff and the upper bearing I had to replace and the support and all that. but. But that collar that sticks up, that, that when that you see the silver, yeah, uh, the that's, that's, that's is original. original. That is original. Mm -hmm. I put a ball bearing up there so that it worked yeah. better than the sleeve bearing. And, and, under, under here, and underneath. Yeah, you can see the... Uh, How that's really... The night down there. We well, no, I... I wonder to I've wonder like whether the Clark firm was involved or somebody I've, like I've that. Given that was a time, some of the, the grant money that... That, Same time, uh, it was the 24 inch. That's right. Yeah, it was going to the car. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever was making the castings for that might have made the castings for this. Yeah. And, and it turns so easily. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm turning easily. it without any effort here. Yeah. Well, I think that's nice. Well, but I, no, I think it originally was 
done that way. I imagine they had, you know, there are one inch ball bearings, balls on a bearing race below, and then there's a, an intermediate uh, casting that is, supports three quarter inch balls. Wow. The next one up that supports the bookcase, which is on spokes. It rotates independently. Uh -huh. And uh, so it was. Uh, it was thought through carefully. So clearly, yeah, sure. That's just beautifully done. Yeah, clearly, uh, whoever designed it thought about it, and uh, you know, yeah, because it wouldn't work well if it wasn't uh, designed carefully. And clearly, it worked through the latter part of at least 15, 15. years of click, uh, Pickering's. Directorship, and then from Shapley, it would be 1920, 21 through 1952. Yeah. Right. And you wonder yeah. whether Solon Bailey sat at it when he was acting oh, director. Oh, quite possibly. Probably. And then, and then I guess Menzel decided he didn't want it. Well, it was more of a symbolic thing, is it my could guess. Be, yeah. A lot of what Menzel was doing was symbolic to convince the Harvard Corporation that Shapley was gone. Hmm. That's that's my take on it. Anyway, thank you yeah. very much. Yeah. Sure. You'll see this. Uh